Most RTX 5080s at the moment retail for around 1600 US dollars and 1300 UK pounds. The RTX 5090 on the other hand costs around 3k in US dollars and about 2.5k in UK pounds, so there's a massive price difference between the two. Delving deeper, the Supreme Liquid RTX 5090 model has just over double the amount of CUDA cores compared to the RTX 5080, 21.7k compared to the 5080 having just over 10.7k. So there's a massive difference already, both cards use GDDDR7 for video memory but that's where the similarities end. The 5080 has 16GB compared to the RTX 5090's 32. Once I got hold of an RTX 5080 I found out pretty quickly that it can overclock extremely well, pushing a total of 3200MHz stable. I was under the impression that the RTX 5090 didn't overclock anywhere near as well. I was wrong. This RTX 5090 overclocks just as well, although of course this card is water cooled so that definitely helped. Regardless, this water-cooled RTX 5090 during my testing remained below 55 degrees Celsius at all times. There was no rise in system temps with the rad mounted like this, but if it was front mounted, system temps will increase as it seriously shuts off front flow air intake. For reference, this air-cooled RTX 5080 hit 65 degrees Celsius under full load. So rounding off, is it worth the extra money paying for a 5090 over a 5080? Definitely not. To be honest, I personally don't believe the advantage the 5090 gives you over the 5080 is worth all that extra money, even at lower resolutions. I mean, you know, how much FPS do you actually need? Blatantly, the RTX 5080's downfall is not having 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It would be a much easier decision to recommend a 5080 if that was the case. But going forward, as games require more and more VRAM, this 5080 might become obsolete quicker than all of Jensen's leather jackets. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. This has been my comparison between an RTX 5080 and 5090. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Goodbye.